All right, when we talk about the qualities of light, there's, there's four ways to describe them. Uh, there's hard and soft, and there's specular and diffused. Hard and soft is really describing the quality of the shadow and how sharp, sharp is this shadow, basically. Is it hard like this, or is it soft, more soft when I diffuse the light? You see the, how soft that is after diffusion. Less, less sharp of an edge. Specular diffuse overlap there. I adjust this boom on the omni light. I can focus the light. And now it has a, has a hot spot, we call this specular. There's a, there's a hotter spot and then it falls off. If I put the silk back or I diffuse it with a gel or use this focus boom and make it more even, this is, this is called diffused. And this is actually just describing the, the, the fall off of the light itself. Every picture is a little different, whether it's a hot light or a, a soft light or an LED. When using these hot lights, it's really important to be aware of your surroundings, to have sandbags on the stands. Uh, these get very hot, it'd be very dangerous to fall on anybody or any property. Uh, and these barn doors can be quite dangerous. They're at eye level, uh, you know, sharp edges. It's also really, really important to communicate on set when you're turning a light on. I would say striking pretty loudly to give an opportunity for other people on the set and our actors, subjects to squint, to cover their eyes, to look away. These lights get really bright and we don't want to assault our pupils in that way. So just get in the habit of saying striking. All right, so we're starting with just one light. Our brightest light, the, the light that sets the scene for our shot, is always called the key light. Generally start with this place somewhere between 45 degrees to the subject and the camera. Uh, you know, I maybe start around 30. Notice these barn doors on the light have a really soft edge because they're so close to the light. So I can really dial in on my subject here. And it's not a sharp edge. All right, now we're gonna add the second light. So the two points set up. Uh, this is gonna be our fill light. And like I said before, with the reflector, the goal is to just knock down any distracting shadows and uh, give us more information about the scene, about our subject, uh, make it a little bit softer. This is generally diffused, but it doesn't have to be. But because we're trying to knock down shadows, we want a little bit softer. This is not diffused yet. I'm gonna say striking. And because this is so much brighter, it just became our key. So I'm gonna dim it and, and see what it looks like. I have both these lights on dimmers, so we can really dial it in. And I'm gonna raise this light a little higher. This is our key. Uh, the, the higher this light is, the, the less shadows across the face will have. So I'm just gonna make it a tiny bit higher. This, a little bit lower on the fill. So I think this is good. We have brought back our cheeks here. There's no distracting, no shadows. And what's really important is we can see the full eye on the broad, broad side of the face here. We could probably go a little lower, but I'm gonna make it softer now to you by adding a gel frame and a, and a piece of diffusion so you can cut it. So I'm going to make this Toda uh, more diffuse by adding diffusion. This is effectively making the light bigger. It's a, a bigger source by spreading the light across the surface. See the whole surface lights up there? So I'm going to clip into this frame and then slide it on. Okay, striking. And now the light on this side is a lot less hard and 
this defines a little bit more shape. It's softer as it wraps around our subject. So I'm noticing that in our image here, he's kind of blending in to the background. There's not a, an edge here. Uh, see, we're losing the hair, a little bit of the shoulder. So now we want to add another uh, backlight for three point. Um, before I do that, again, I'm just going to try adding a reflector first. So I can get some on the shoulder and neck here. I'm having a little hard time with the hair. So I'm going to add that last light. So I have this LED back here. Unlike the tungsten lights, this does not get hot and I can dim it on its own. So striking. It's quite bright. I'm going to dim it down. It's also the wrong color temperature, so I'm going to put an orange gel on it to make it the same color as our tungsten lights. So I've gelled this light with the CTO to make it this, the same temperature as these tungsten lights. I've also added some diffusion just to knock down the light a little bit. And it, it, this is looking good. I have a little bit of definition and separation from the background here, uh, both the shoulders and the hair, uh, and a little bit on the top here. Um, quite like that. Let's see if it goes up a little bit more, how it looks. And I could probably dim my fill slightly. This is looking great, but I am going to try one thing. I'm going to turn off my key and fill just so that I have a better perception of what is happening with just this one light. So it's a good thing to do is to kind of isolate what each setup is doing. So this is just my backlight or rim light. Uh, and that looks about right. It's just adding a little edge to most of our subject here. I'm going to try just my fill and just my key. So this is definitely doing most of the, the heavy lifting here. I'm going to try to knock a little bit more from our background off. This is great. So my background is gone. This looks good. I'm going to turn them back on. Strike. All right, so I'm happy with the setup. Uh, some scenarios, the background might be important. So I would add a fourth light to my setup here. Um, a lot of times you're doing an interview or a video, the lighting in that space is built for that space. It's functional for whatever happens there not necessarily for your picture. So if it's important to the content, you may need to light the background. You also may need to do it if, if your subject's blending in too much with the background. So I'm going to add this backlight. This is a Toda on with, a, uh, ref with an umbrella. So it's reflecting off of it. It's essentially making it bigger and making it slightly farther away, which makes it a lot softer and more diffused. Striking. And now we have a little bit more information about our background and space here. It's not just completely falling off. If there is too much spill on your subject from this backlight, I can add a flag to block it off. And then I can just really aim it. Flags are great because I can cause soft problems like this with the, the overspill of these lights. Um, notice the closer I am to the light, like the barn doors, the softer the shadow will be on our subject. And the farther away and closer to our subject, the sharper the shadow. So if I wanted to get dramatic, have sharp lines, I need to be able to position this closer. 
And I can put this in place with a C stand. This is a C stand. It's an extra arm on our set here. So this is the black flag. You can put this in the C stand arm. I really angle it wherever I need it to go. That's a four-point setup. So this is an example of a motivational light. We have this scene with daylight in front of a window. And we have this daylight balanced LED panel that is mimicking the light coming in through the window. So it just adds a little bit of extra to match uh, so we can really dial in our settings. But I also could simulate the window opening or closing the blinds coming up or down. Uh, a light switch coming on. Uh, that kind of thing. So to further motivate this light, uh, because this outdoor light is uncontrollable and the time goes through the day, the clouds change, the best thing to do is to just change it all together. Uh, get rid of it, block out the windows, kind of close the blinds. And I've added a Diva light, which is a very soft fluorescent light, and some blue gels to match the daylight temperature. And now we have a very controlled shot that mimics the daylight coming through the windows. So this is just a little mini LED panel, uh, battery powered, can fit straight onto the camera, uh, popular in the video blogging world. Uh, but it's great for just catching a little bit of life in the eye. So, as I get a little closer here, I don't want to light up the face too much. It's definitely not our main overall feel. Uh, but I do want to add just a secondary little reflection to the eye. Just that gives it a little bit more life. And very flattering and easiest, easier for us to, you know, like, relate to the subject. So this is called a catch light and our eye light. Just gives a little bit more life and drama texture. This other LED is also great, portable, battery powered. It's called an ice light. It's dimmable. Can get pre quite bright. And doesn't get hot, so I can easily stick this in a car. Um, and a cabinet in some little scene where I need a little bit of something, easy to hide, lightweight. Connects to a tripod or to a light stand, easy to clamp, tape in place. And I can just use it to get really dramatic with things. It's very soft and diffused. Very easy to gel. So I can get more creative effects. All right, I'm going to talk about microphone recording patterns. It's a shotgun microphone. It's a hypercardioid, so it means it's, it's heart-shaped, uh, but very pointed, very, very specific. This one's extra long, so it's hyper. Uh, this is great uh, for location sound, recording actors, pointing it at them. Um, one mistake I always see is the boom operator being just above subject uh, instead of kind of in front of them. So the boom operator should be a few steps ahead so you can really point it at the mount. Uh, I always say point at the chest. Uh, it's a little bit more forgiving. So this will record only a subject and none of the background noise. Not great for any sense of presence of the space or the room. You're really only getting just what you're pointing it at. This is an Omni microphone. So an Omni has a spherical recording pattern, so it records equally in every direction. Uh, it's great for recording subjects, three or four people around a table. You can't have them individually mic'd. You want to record them all 
It's great for recording the presence of a space, the way sound bounces off the room. Uh, bad for rock bands, bad for uh, specific dialogue scenes, because you're really getting the whole room and not just what your focus is. Sort of in between is a cardioid mic. Looks very similar to the Omni, but it is heart-shaped. Uh, won't record anything this direction, only in this direction. Uh, great for music, uh, great for journalism, interviews, uh, more forgiving than the shotgun microphone because it records everything equally all around in this direction. All right, let's look at our Zoom recorder. Zoom has built-in microphones or stereos, two of them. It's great for recording a space, uh, kind of the dynamics of it, the feel for a room. Uh, that's a good thing to record room tone with. 10, 15 seconds, you can record and post, give you the sense of space to add in with your dialogue. Uh, some quick settings that sometimes people trip up on. You want to make sure it's recording the right rate and, and depth. Uh, so we click this wave MP3 button, far right. We'll get a menu. And we always want to make sure it's on wave format instead of MP3. Wave is not compressed, it's higher quality. The 48 hertz is how often it's taking a recording from the microphone. 48 is very great for most things. Uh, if we were doing Foley and sound effects, we might up that to 96, so double it. And that's just further down. 24-bit just means the, the depth of a recording, so the resolution of our recording. 24 is, is pretty good quality and a way, way better than what our cameras can do. So just always make sure it's 48, 24. I can get out of that. Uh, one other common mistake, if I go to the menu and go down to input, in the second page, there's a thing called phantom power. This supplies power to our shotgun microphone. And a, a lot of times you think you've plugged everything in and it's not working. Uh, it's because this, this needs a little bit of power. Now these can get powered with a, a single AA battery, and it's always best to do that when possible. It'll allow us to record for longer on our Zoom. Phantom power is often described as plus 48. So if you're ever having issues, just remember phantom power plus 48, do I need it on or off? These other microphones do not need it, just the shotgun. And then the last thing on here is our, when we're recording the Zoom, notice there's no levels right now. If I hit the record button once, it's flashing. Uh, I'm on the, the mics built in and I'm getting levels. I am not recording, this is a common mistake. In order to record, I need to hit it one more time and notice there's time code at the top here. And now I know I'm recording. I'm gonna stop that. It's really important to use headphones when using a Zoom uh, so we can tell what's happening. But you can't trust your ears. You need to look at the levels. For dialogue, we want our levels to peak at around negative 12. You can see there, screen lights up. We want the dialogue to, to be there or just above. We don't really want it to go past like negative eight. That way we have some headroom if our actor changes their volume. Sometimes they get quieter, sometimes they get louder as they go. So just make sure you ride those levels and you reference them. On this side is the volume for our headphones and that is not affecting the level that we're recording at all. The recording level is on this side. So we can go up or down. It's a little loud for me how close I am to the recorder. And wireless lav, the last type of microphone. This allows us to broadcast our mic through radio. Uh, and it has a little 
lavalier clip here. You can put it on. This is great for interviews where you don't want to have a bunch of wires around. Um, maybe a shot that's really wide and you can't have a boom pole there. Uh, this is either an Omni or a Kreider mic, so when it's clipped, it can pick up closed noise if you're moving. It's an action scene. Uh, you'll probably hear a lot of noise, uh, which is not great. Ideally, your subject is not really moving very much. It's still worth having that microphone because we can match it in post. Uh, maybe we're going to add that sound back in in post. Uh, we'll do voiceover. Uh, or we just need it for syncing picture and another soundtrack later.